Pettis, the author of I Must Betray You, and I am going to be doing a Q&A with United by Pop. So for readers just hearing about I Must Betray You, how would you best sum it up for them? I would sum up I Must Betray You uh, by saying it is a fast-paced thriller. Uh, it's set in 1989 in Bucharest, Romania, and it follows the story of 17-year-old Christian Florescu, who is blackmailed by the Romanian regime to become an informer. And he's expected to betray his friends and his family, uh, even his girlfriend. And he decides instead that he's gonna betray the regime. And <laughs> everything goes horribly wrong. Uh, his life is in danger. The clock is ticking. I was breathless writing this book and I hope that you'll be breathless reading it. What was it that inspired you to write a novel exploring the events of 1989 Romania? I was on tour uh, in Romania uh, for my first novel and I quickly realized how little I knew about this history. Uh, I mean imagine a world of controlled darkness where your nutrition is controlled, your electricity is controlled, women's bodies belong to the state. Um, it sounds dystopian, but it wasn't. It was real. Citizens were recruited to become part of this spy network. And it just was, was so sadly and tragically compelling that I knew I had to write about it and share the story. During your research, did you make any discoveries about Romania during the communist regime that you found especially surprising or shocking? The book chronicles life under this maniacal dictator. And during my research, I discovered that the United States and the UK, they were working with this dictator and in some cases supporting this dictator. And I don't want to give any spoilers. You have to read the book to discover how and why. But I literally lost my breath when during research when I discovered that. You brilliantly portrayed both the physical and psychological toll living under a communist regime, while also creating a constant sense of dread and tension throughout the book. I can imagine being immersed in Christian's perspective during such a painful era could become quite emotionally draining at times. What was it like to write from his perspective? I chose first person perspective uh, for this thriller because I wanted to put the reader into Christian's head and heart. Uh, so you could be looking through his eyes, kind of like GoPro, uh, you know, POV for this. And it was intense to try to put myself um, in his place. But I have a theory that um, if I am immersed in the emotion and in the trenches when I'm, I'm writing the books, the reader will be there as well. And I want to bring the reader to the page and keep them there. So I don't ask myself, you know, what's the cost of admission? You know, is this going to be draining? I just jump right in. And in, in that way, I hope um, to really create an authentic atmosphere and also um, do justice to those who experience the events. From 1989 Romania to 1957 Spain to 1950s New Orleans and beyond, you've covered multiple eras and countries throughout your published work. But are there any time periods or historical events that you'd particularly like to explore? So many, <laughs> you know, so many. Um, anything that involves a secret, anything that involves young people as key players. Young people are change makers. They are lamplighters, you know, of truth and justice. Uh, and actually, a lot of my ideas come from readers themselves who say, I would love to see you explore this time period. So you might see things, you know, in the future that are set in the Czech Republic or in Argentina or Bulgaria. I don't want to spill my secrets yet. You're pretty much the queen of YA <laughs> historical fiction, and rightly so. But what is it about the genre that you are so drawn to writing? Oh, well, thank you. The queen, wow, of, of historical fiction. I love that. Um, I'm drawn to it uh, because it gives me an opportunity to make history human. Um, I think feelings stay with us longer than facts and when I can take these underrepresented secrets um, and make them human through characters and story, at that moment I think our heart opens and we have the ability to care for people that we've never met and that's really powerful and that's what draws me to the genre. You mentioned in your author's note that you not only talk to experts of Romania during the time I Must Betray You was set, but also people who lived through it. Can you share what that experience was like? The experience of speaking 
to true witnesses. Uh, it was thrilling and it was also heartbreaking. Imagine the courage for someone to sit down with me and revisit this dark world. Um, the regime hangs over so many people like a cold shadow, but they really wanted this story to be told. And so they bravely shared their, their stories with me selflessly. And so they were crying. I was crying. Um, they told me things that I never, ever could imagine and that I'll never, ever forget. Do you have any YA historical fiction recommendations for readers wanting more after having loved your books? Oh, yes. Where do I start? Um, anything by Marcus Suzak. Of course, you know, The Book Thief. A Gathering Light by Jennifer Donnelly. That was published um, years ago, but it is a classic. Um, Codename Verity by Elizabeth Ween. Amazing. And uh, I also love historical fiction because it's an elastic genre. You could write a historical fantasy, you can write a historical thriller, and you could even write a historical romance. So for historical romance, maybe Laura Wood. Are you currently working on anything new? And if so, is there anything you can share with us about it? Yes, I'm going to spill a secret because I'm sure my publisher doesn't want me to talk about this, but I'm going to anyway. Uh, I believe that every human being has a story to tell. And through writing historical fiction, the conversations often go from conversations about the book to conversations about personal history. And my next book is actually helping readers archive and distill their own story. And maybe they don't want to publish a book or, or you know, write a novel, but I want them to archive their own story. And it's called You, the Story, A Writer's Guide to Craft Through Memory. And so I help you open the door to memories, good and bad, and face them and walk through them and write about them.